many recipes throughout time that have remained unchecked, especially bread recipes. And today we're going to chin check this one. Okay, so today we are making pull apart bread, monkey bread, whatever you wanna call it, balls in a pan and you bake it. For the longest time, people have been doing it with this pre-canned biscuit dough or pre-canned this. Just make the dough. It takes very little time. You just gotta wait for it to rise. We're gonna make it with a brioche style dough. And more specifically, we're gonna do it two, two different, different ways, ways, a sweet way and a savory way. You got your dessert and you got your, I guess you could put it on the dinner table, right? Instead of your dinner rolls, you put, a, you put this on there. See, look at that, you like that? That's pretty cool. Now, with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Well, well, well. Here we are. We made it to the ooey gooey bread land. This is the kind of stuff that you eat until you feel physical pain, which I don't recommend for the record. Now we have two for you here. A sweet garam masala rum caramel sticky bun monkey bread and a savory sesame parmigiano garlic monkey bread. Don't that sound good? I know your body is tingling right now. Thankfully, these both use the exact same dough, so we're gonna start there. It's easy, so again, remain calm and stress-free. Now acquire one and a half cups or 375 milliliters liters of whole milk that's around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Give the glass a few taps for good vibes. Then to that, you're going to mix in two and a quarter teaspoon or seven grams of instant yeast and place that to the side. Now in the bowl of stand mixer, add four and a quarter cup or 640 grams of all-purpose flour. Then to that, you're going to add a quarter cup or 52 grams of granulated sugar. I actually wrote granulated sugar. So that too. And one and a quarter cup or five grams of fine sea salt. Mix together until thoroughly combined and pop that brother onto your stand mixer, fit it with the dough hook attachment, then begin mixing that on medium speed and slowly pour in six tablespoons or 82 grams of unsalted butter that's been gently melted, okay? Gently, not hot. Once it's incorporated, pour in your big yeasty milkies, followed by two large eggs, then just let that mix for about three to four minutes or until you get a nice homogenous dough. Yes, it's going to be quite sticky. Now dump that out onto a floured work surface, give it a few slap and folds, then using flour to de-stick as necessary, gently form into a ball, plop that into a grease bowl, and let it rest covered for 10 minutes. Then pull it out, slap and fold for two more minutes, then back into your bowl, plastic wrap it, and let it rise for one to two hours at room 10. Now, while that's going, let's make our rum caramel. In a medium saucepan, combine one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar and a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water. Make sure the sugar is totally saturated with the water, then heat that ever medium low till the sugar is dissolved, then take one cinnamon stick, char it lightly with a kitchen torch or on your stove top, then place that into your sugar syrup and let it continue to simmer for about five to eight minutes or until it turns a beautiful amber color. Please do me a favor. While this is simmering, don't stir it. Immediately whisk in a third cup or 75 grams of cubed cold unsalted butter. Then once that's emulsified, whisk in half a cup of heavy whipping cream, then remove that from the heat, and finally whisk in three and a half tablespoons or 50 milliliters of your favorite rum. Now pull your cinnamon stick out and place it in the container you plan to store this in, and you guessed it, pour your rum caramel in and let that bad boy cool all the way down. Now just before your dough is plump and done, let's make our masala sugar. It sounds fancy, it's quite easy. Combine one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar with one tablespoon or 14 grams of garam masala spice and a quarter teaspoon of fresh grated nutmeg. Whisk that together and that's your shuggy woogie. Now take your fully matured and risen dough with all of its aspirations and dreams. Then quickly punch out every last quark of life out of it. Then dump it onto a lightly floured work surface and divide that bad boy into 45 small pieces. At this point, I really recommend weighing these dough pieces out, which you're gonna want all of them to be about 28 to 30 grams each. Then once you have all of your pieces, roll those bad boys into taut and supple balls. Each and every one of them, all those balls. Oh yeah, nice balls. Now lightly grease a bundt cake pan, roll a ball in your masala sugar, and place it in your cake pan, then repeat with all of your dough. Dough piece, balls, sugar, cake pan. Rinse and repeat until you've used all of your dough and your bundt pan is full like this. Now cover that with plastic wrap and let that proof at room temp for 20 minutes. And just before that's done, in a small saucepan, combine half a cup or 112 grams of unsalted butter with one cup or 215 grams of packed light brown sugar. Heat that over low heat until everything is melted, increase the heat to medium low, and bring that to a light simmer, then after simmering for about a minute and it looks homogenous, pour your glaze while it's hot over your masala monkey bread and pop it into your oven that's been preheated to 350 Fahrenheit to 35 to 45 minutes or until golden brown and lovely. Take it out of the oven, let it cool for five minutes and then invert it on a large serving platter or cake stand and immediately remove that top and drench that guy with as little or as much rum caramel as you like. Once it's coated, serve immediately while warm. Trust me, this gotta be served while warm. It's so much better. Now at this point, just take a gander at how fluffy, light, and rich that dough is looking. One catch of the eye on that and good lord have mercy on my soul for I'm about to bust it down. Wow, look at this. We let it rise a little too long so it looks more bunt cake like, but I can assure you there's big balls in here. I will demonstrate how big the balls are. Oh 
my god! Look at this, just soaked. Oh! Oh! Oh my god, it's so good. I just swallowed that whole ball, barely, barely, barely chewed it. That could be used in so many meme formats. This is so good, I just swallowed a whole ball. Most of these sort of like pull apart breads, monkey breads, whatever the hell you want to call them, they're always slightly underbaked in a way that's not good, right? They're gummy. This is like fluffy, but it has that density. It kind of has that custard-like quality. It's soft and pillowy, like biting into a cloud, but the cloud is covered in rum caramel and glaze and masala spice. That's it. I. She doing that all for me. Yeah, you guys need to try this. That's perfect. There's nothing more pillowy than this. This is so good. It's like a god personally made a cinnamon roll. This is a butt better. This is donut holes better, cinnamon rolls better, cake better. This is the ultimate dessert. This is something so good. Instead of chewing it, I just want to grab it. Just, uh -huh. You heard it from the squad, from myself. This is the greatest monkey bread of your entire life. But we're not gonna stop here. I got one more thing right up my pantaloons. Why did I say that? Okay, next up is Mr. Savory. So same thing, make the dough, rise it, punch it down, divide it into 45 pieces, make balls, and we're back to the spot I want you in. This time, we have two coating agents here. One will be plain untoasted sesame seeds, and the other will be a mixture of two cups of finely grated Parmigiano-Reggiano, a quarter cup of finely chopped garlic, half a cup of finely chopped parsley, and one teaspoon of thyme leaves. Toss that together, and that's coating number two. Now, once you have all of your prepped balls, we're gonna first dip our ball gently in melted and salted butter. Again, make sure your butter's not hot, okay? Just melted. Then roll it in one of the coatings of choice till fully coated then toss into the prepared bunt pan then with the next ball dip in the butter and coat in the opposing coating see where i'm going here you're going to repeat alternating between each one we're not doing both on one ball it's one or the other so keep on repeating alternating between each type of coating to get a varying texture then once you're done with that and all of your dough balls are coated and in the bunt pan take the remainder of that butter and parmesan garlic mixture combine the two and pour half of that on top of your dough you can save the rest for literally anything put it on a steak you're gonna love it now cover that with plastic wrap and proof for 20 minutes then remove the plastic wrap and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 to 40 minutes or until a beautifully golden brown. And yet again, pop it out of the bunt pan onto a plate and observe a more beautiful garlic bread worthy of its finger food capabilities. Now let's give these two a taste test and see if there is a real winner in this bread doughy world. Woo! Look at this guy. Look at it. Mm! Parmigiano garlic sesame monkey bread. First off, the caramelization, the browning, the Maillard. And then look at this, glistening. Good Lord, Janice, goddamn. Oh my God. Mm. The verdict. I actually still like the sweet one over this, but imagine you're hosting a party. You just want one monkey bread for dessert. Why not have a savory one beforehand? Make a little sandwich with this. Dip in the ranch. You're welcome. That'll be $400 billion. Oh. So we have two different monkey breads. It's up to you which one you want to make. This was made properly. I'm sick and tired of seeing the biscuit version, all right? Using the instant biscuit. Just make your own damn dough. Just make your own dough. Take it or leave, buddy. Bone apple tea. You want to know what else has grubby little finger foods clawing for the next little roll? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our monkey bread, pull apart bread, ball bread, balls in a thing with balls. See where I'm going with this? If I'm being honest, I preferred the sweet one probably because I have a little bit more of a sweet tooth. I will say that the Parmesan garlic was in general a crowd favorite. A lot of people kept going back to it. I really liked it. So depending on what you're doing, pick what you want. That's what it's all about. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you 